I think there's a big misconception among bass fishermen that when you're fishing boat docks, you gotta have something on the bottom. You gotta have a jig or Texas rig, Nico rig, whatever. I've actually become a fan of skipping um, bladed jigs underneath these boat docks. Now, it's kind of a perfect combination for me, to be honest with you, and, and probably others like me who like to fish quick. Um, I'm a very impatient person at home and on the water. I, I like to get things done quickly and I like to find fish quickly if I can. So I don't mind skipping jigs or pitching jigs under docks, but you know, if, I'm, if I haven't been out on the lake for several days, I need to find something and I need to find it quick. And instead of pitching way up on here with jigs and dragging and dragging and dragging, I can just pick off some active fish. You can put a lot of these bladed jigs the same places that you'd normally put a regular flipping or pitching jig. I'm using right now the Z-Man Tatterbait Jackhammer and it does skip very well. Um, the head design allows it to slide along the water fairly easy without much resistance. So again, I can put this did this thing anywhere I can put my favorite flipping jig. So, and you, your trailer selection, um, I think is pretty actually important um, with this type of technique because I, I'm not in favor of a soft plastic trailer with a bunch of appendages on it. I don't want it to grab a bunch of water as it's skipping across the surface. So like I'm opting to use the Z-Man Razor Shads. It's super, uh, super streamlined. Doesn't have any crazy appendages or legs kicking. Has a lot of nice action. And again, you can catch about 100 fish on each one of them. So, you know, so something streamlined and something that matches the color of your bladed jig pretty well. And when it comes to rod selection, I prefer a kind of a fast tip, nothing too fancy really, just any seven foot medium heavy will do. You want that faster tip. It allows you to load up on your back cask and skip efficiently um, without, you know, getting too many backlashes or without pulling the bait and being inaccurate. And again, you're not always going to get the most bites doing this, but you know, this stretch of docks I'm on, if I was flipping a regular jig, it'd probably take me 20, 30 minutes to really pick it apart. But with this, I can fly through here in probably 10 minutes, eight, 10 minutes. And again, I'm not going to catch every fish on the dock, but you know, it gives me an idea and then I can come back through or go to similar docks like this on this steep bank. Then I can go through the rest of the day, pick it apart maybe with a regular jig and get some more bites. And also on cloudy days, you know, so I'm, I'm skipping up under this dock, but while you're waiting on your next good skipping angle, go ahead and skirt down the sides of these docks too. You know, they'll oftentimes sit on those outside corner posts and just wait to ambush shad or bluegill or whatever the case may be. And when, when you're skipping this chatterbait under these docks, it's, it's really important not to go into robot mode too much and when i say that i'm referring to using the same retrieve speed the same method over and over and over um it happens to me a lot and i have to consciously tell myself to change up so for instance when i cast this thing under that dock when i come near a cross brace pop it kill it or real 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 and kill it next to that dock post and making contact with that wood is uh very important in my opinion um the jack camera has a really cool way of deflecting off of dock posts and stuff. So when that blade hits it, it kicks out about three inches to either side. And just that little, that little change, that little sporadic change can trigger that instinctual feeding reaction type response from a bass, even when they're fairly lethargic. So um, don't just stay out of that robot mode and always try different stuff.